look, uh, clearly, we have a very privileged position as we are fellow shareholder of BlackRock in many situations we get involved. Uh, and it is because of our direct experience uh, on dealing with BlackRock uh, in, uh, in company where we're in running activist case that, quite frankly, um, you know, we develop a clear understanding of the discrepancy and the, and the uh, um, gap between what BlackRock constantly instantly say on ESG and what they actually do. Uh, as far as BlackRock are concerned, they, they believe that their strategies are in the best interests of their clients at this stage. They, as we know, have made a number of uh, claims about their own attitude towards ESG. What is it specifically that you find wanting? Well, look, uh, I mean, I think that, as I said, we see BlackRock endorsing a number of of bad practice from governance, social, and environmental perspective, which is not exactly in tune with what they say. I'll make an example. You know, if in, you know, in our latest uh, uh, activist campaign on Richmond, they've been opposing the increase of board representation for investors owning 90% of the company from one to three. I really don't think this is in the best interest of um, the investor upon which on a fiduciary basis they you know, invest the money. And of course, it's not in the best interest of any shareholder. And similar observation we've seen, uh, you know, in many other company uh, where at, at best their role was pretty muted. I can take as an example our two years campaign on Solvay, which was resolved uh, thanks to, you know, uh, 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 thanks to the effort of the company, but with very muted presence of BlackRock in this. And there are many, many examples that we put in our letter, as you probably have seen it. Giuseppe, just a couple of quick technical questions from me before Karen comes in. How much of BlackRock do you own? What percentage of the company do you own? Look, we, we never disclosed position we have. It is known that we manage at firm level up to $150 million equivalent of asset. We have a very concentrated portfolio of 12, 13, 14 stock. So, you know, you can run the maths. And, and understand the order of magnitude to this position, not e all equally weighted. Um, but I think, um, I, I mean, this issue is an issue, and, and every time that we make such an investment that we lead such a campaign, it's pretty much based on, um, you know, getting a significant support from a broader number of stakeholders. Let me tell you, today, uh, when, we, actually, when we did our campaign on Danone and when we start survey, we were obviously much smaller than what we are today and see what we got there. Sorry, Giuseppe, how much of BlackRock do you own? And the reason why I'm asking is because it's stunningly relevant. If you own 0.001% of a $108 billion company, I don't necessarily think it gives you the right to tell the company and the other top 100 shareholders what to do. If you own such a tight, if you own a significant amount and you're a significant shareholder, I think you bought yourself a seat at the table, sir. No, I think uh, this is uh, exactly the contrary of what governance means. Every shareholder on the table has the right uh, to speak out, speak up, and express his opinion. We run an activist campaign with Solvay just to make the point only with one share. And, uh, you know, in the end, uh, Solvay agreed uh, and to collaborate with our request. Um, I mean, obviously, we are not the, certainly a large shareholder in BlackRock, uh, but that doesn't prevent us and any other shareholder to uh, make our observation and to advocate for change. So, so, Seppi, so you think if you bought one share, that gives you the right to tell these companies how to trade? It's not that what I think. It's what we've just done. I mean, <laughs> we run, just to demonstrate at this point, um, and we brought it to the extreme, we run a two years activist campaign against Belgian company survey, and we made the point of doing this with one share. And the company on the September 6th, you know, we issued a joint press release where they essentially... Uh, you know, took on board most of our accommodation and th they agreed to seize a significant environmental problem uh, in one of the factory plants. So it's not what I say, it's what we do. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.